Yeah, um, it's a good point. I mean, one, one, one example, guys, is Visa, which for, I guess, a variety of reasons is the number one Dow component. It does remind me, though, the journal story in, in the paper today, David, uh, literally titled uh, Business Travel is Coming Back, uh, <laughs> talking to people who were anxious to get hot, to hop back on planes. We probably should have asked the Zoom analyst about it a moment ago, but um, that would obviously have huge implications if and when it happens. I know you've been net skeptical on that. Well, again, I mean, they say business travel is coming back, but then they also raise that question that I continue to raise, which is, but will it ever be back to what it was in 2019? And I think that that is still an open question. There is no doubt, as, as we've been saying, of course it is going to come back. Um, Many senior executives want people back in the office, and that seems to be a slower-than-expected process. Some are being a bit more strict about it. I think even, in fact, on Monday, you're going to have the likes of uh, Blackstone and Goldman and a number of the financial firms we know saying, you're back. you got to be back. Sorry, no summer from working from the Hamptons or wherever you might be. But others are being a lot more lenient. But when it comes to getting out on the road, yeah, no doubt. Um, if your competitor is going to see a client, you're going to see a client. But I still might have that question. I brought up yesterday, of course, the idea of road shows, which are going to be a Zoom-based function now. Right. Uh, but as well, internally, do you really make the trip to see people that you might not ha that you might have previously? Maybe it's not as much. So, without a doubt, business travel coming back uh, and will come back. But will it ever be where it was in 2019, right. or how many years will it be before we see that? Yeah, that's the that, that obviously is the question. I mean, a road show is, you know, it's so easy to do virtually. It, you know, you're going to read the prospectus, you're going to get a pitch deck. Um, but if you're if you're kind of Talking to a client and trying to figure out strategic stuff and trying to win a deal, that's probably a different equation. Yeah, and, and or there's a meal involved yeah, and or exactly. any number of them or, in my case, lots of tequila. That's, exactly. you know, that's yeah. harder to do. It's harder to do. <laughs> harder to do virtually. It, yes. I mean, people and, have done it, been doing it now well, for yeah. 15 months, but I think they prefer and are happy now, Carl, to finally be in person drinking their tequila with each other. Yes, Yes, and we're going to get there uh, in the coming days as well. Um, you know, Goldman's got a note. They have this reopening index. They've had it for several quarters now. It's a, it's a barometer from 1 to 10, sort of describing at where the economy is in terms of reopening. It's been at a 6 for a long time, several, several weeks, and they finally went to a 7 uh, this morning, reflecting further reopening. But they do have a line in here, David. We believe corporate America will return to the office over the coming six months. Um, they've got some bullish notes here on office REITs. But notes like this have been colored by the fact that management at Goldman has been so vocal about bringing people back. They have. That is true. What's interesting as well, though, is there's a lot of resistance. There's still resistance to people coming back full time. And there's an expectation on the part of many employees that they will be able to work three days a week in the office, perhaps as much as four. But there will be more flexibility. And I I think we know that now. Um, now, so the financial companies that we know perhaps better than many others, because we know their management's quite well, Carl, I think are being a bit, some stricter than others, but perhaps overall stricter than many other corporations and many other businesses, Mike, where they don't feel the need to have everybody in the office all the time. And yeah. perhaps there isn't quite as much structure, or, or I should say emphasis on culture. Exactly. I was just going to say that a company that really does kind of cultivate this sense that uh, that it is a distinct culture. Uh, also, where there's there's a P&L, you're allocating credit for various, you know, kind of revenue that comes in. It's a pretty intricate uh, situation in terms of grading folks and constant evaluation and compensation. Maybe it's better to do uh, in person. But I think also, Carl, there's been these surveys out there that say a huge percentage of especially younger workers say they would consider changing jobs and just leaving a company that said, you know, they, they couldn't work from home for the most part. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.